The nervous system is divided into different parts based on function. When we say central nervous system, we are referring to the brain, which is found within the skull, and the spinal cord, which is found within the vertebral column that runs across the midline of the body. The peripheral nervous system refers to the nerves or the fibers that exit from each segment of the spinal cord, as we can see in the image, in order to reach their targets, which can be either muscles or organs, for example. The peripheral nervous system is divided into two parts, the autonomic nervous system and the somatic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is involuntary and it is responsible for regulating our internal organs and basic functions such as heart rate, breathing rate, etc. The sympathetic nervous system activates what we call the fight or flight response by increasing heart rate and alertness, for example. Now, on the other hand, the parasympathetic nervous system acts in the opposite direction and it is what we call the rest and digest response, which will do all of the opposite things. For example, heart rate will slow down and uh, less necessary functions such as digestion will um, occur. Now, the somatic nervous system is thought to be under voluntary control as opposed to the autonomic nervous system, and we also divide it into two parts. The first is the sensory part, which is responsible for transmitting sensory information about the environment back to the brain. It is called afferent because the information flows from the peripheral nervous system back to the central nervous system. Now, on the other hand, the motor part is responsible for transmitting signals to muscles, for instance, in order to activate specific responses based on the type of information that is received from the environment, so based on the movement that needs to occur and the context. Accordingly, the motor uh, component of the somatic nervous system is called the efferent component because it goes in the opposite direction, so it goes from the brain out to the peripheral nervous system. Now, one way to remember this is to think of the E and efferent, so this stands for exit. So the information exits the brain to go to the periphery, and we know that the afferent information flows in the opposite direction, so from the periphery to the brain. Now to sum up how these work together, let's consider an example. If our hand gets too close to a heat source, the heat detectors in our fingers will transmit this sensory information through the afferent pathway or the sensory pathway up to the brain. Now the brain will receive this information and will decide that the smart thing to do is to move the hand away from the heat in order to avoid damage. So it will activate the motor response through the efferent pathway that will go down to the muscles of the hand, causing them to contract in order to move the hand away. Now another important anatomical uh, part that we find in the brain that I would really like to uh, highlight now because we will um, we will be seeing these structures later on in when we look at images of the brain. Now we're not going to go into this in detail but it's important to know that we have certain cavities in the brain they're called ventricles and we can see them here. So we have the lateral ventricles, the third ventricle and the fourth ventricle and then they will flow through um, a canal in the spinal cord. Now these ventricles are filled with cerebrospinal fluid and uh, this fluid is constantly circulating around and within the brain. It's really important for protecting the brain since it surrounds the brain and therefore it can absorb any shock from some kind of physical blow to the skull. So it really supports and uh, cushions uh, the brain that is found within the skull.